it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I have got this box um, and I'll come on to the sentiment in a minute which just makes me smile. Um, it's a nice um, milk carton top box and I was I was really struggling to make a box for a particular thing and then it was one of those light bulb moments um, this is the particular thing. It's a mini bottle of wine. Uh, it's an eight, a 187 milliliter bottle of wine. They are readily available in a variety of flavours um, from our local supermarket. My variety of flavours. I would hasten to add they've been sitting on my desk for quite a while and I've only actually had one of them. Um, and that was months and months ago when my husband was out one evening and I fancied a glass of wine. So, don't judge me. Um, but it fits beautifully and I will show you when I make the new one, I will show you just how beautifully it fits. Um, this amused me and this is a bit naughty but it's a new stamp set that is coming in March um, and it's more than words and it's one of the celebration coordination sets uh, because the words go with some of the items that we've already got and because adulting is hard I was looking for a sentiment to put on a box that's containing a bottle of wine and because ad adulting is hard just made me smile and I know it's a bit naughty and I don't really care. Um, however what I am using is the Painted Seasons uh, bundle so it's the designer series paper and the stamp set come as one level two item so they are free with a 90 pound or more order um, so I've used one of the pattern papers for this version and I'm going to use one of the others for the next version I'm using 12 by 12 paper but I'm using 12 by 12 paper or card I should say that comes in the floral romance suite so it comes in a pack uh, that's in the spring summer catalogue and it's fresh fig, mossy meadow and petal pink and I'm using petal pink uh, and I'm using it again because petal pink is one of the colours that goes with the uh, designer series paper in the Painted Seasons um, set. So scoreboard, scoreboard alert, it's gonna go off the bottom of the camera and just trust me that I will be scoring all the way down. Um, the paper is just annoyingly too big uh, because it's 11 and a quarter which is fine but it's nine inches wide and that's because of the size of the bottle i did try and do it with a two inch uh, but it was just not going to work um, and two inches would have made so much difference um, the final dimensions are um, it's two and a two and an eighth square at the bottom uh, from the bottom to here is six and a half inches um, and then there's just this bit at the top which is where the top of the bottle goes so if I lie this down next to it the top of the bottle just sneaks in here um, and that's how you can get it out of even a 12 by 12 sheet I was struggling even with 12 by 12 so um, I'm going to have my very scrappy notes to one side so with the short side at the top we are going to score at two and one eighth uh, four and a quarter six and three eighths and eight and a half whoops and don't jump at the bottom of your eight and a half fortunately that's going to get cut away mm, or hidden um, with the long edge at the top, you actually I want the long edge at the long edge. Yeah, no, it doesn't actually. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Um, only because I've jumped my bottom, it doesn't actually matter which way up or down you put it, but because I've jumped my card at the bottom, I am going to uh, make sure that it's this way up, but it doesn't actually matter. Two and one eighth, because we've got a square box, then. Eight and five eighths, eight and five eighths, and ten and three quarters. 
and that leaves you with a half inch at the top. Now, theoretically, you can turn that over and do that score that way. It doesn't actually make a huge difference. But, right. Okay. Um, now, with your... Um, with your half inch at... And I've written this down. I need to... With the half inch at the top, with my half inch at the top, you move it just a little bit. You want Basically, you're moving it one sixteenth of an inch across from this edge. And this is where I just need to... Because I've changed which way up I'm doing it, I just need to make sure I know what I'm doing. So, forgive me while I open the box that I've just done. Okay, right. So, I've done it. So I'm going to turn this over, um, purely because I've, I need this bit there. Um, and it doesn't actually make any difference for this particular piece. So, with your half inch to the left and your half inch at the top, you are going to mark... I'm just reading my notes. Let's go at three and a quarter. No, forget forget that. With your half inch at the top and your half inch at the right, come across a sixteenth of an inch and then mark at three and a quarter. You say you're coming at a sixteenth of an inch, three and a quarter. I'm just checking that that looks right. Yes, and you come down that first to that first half inch score line, and then again at seven and a half. Don't you love it when the notes don't make sense? I'm just going to... And these are my notes. So, so I need the half inch at the top and right. Otherwise, I won't know what on earth's going on. OK. Let's get rid of that. Um, this is going to make the rest of the video interesting with seven minutes already gone. However... So all we're going to do is we're going to join the diagonal from this score my line to the corner. So one, and whilst I'm on the same diagonal, two, and one, and two. So that is all our scoring done. Now, you want to burnish your vertical and horizontal score lines, but not your diagonal. And the half inch at the top, you want to push the other way. So that is going back on itself. And then everything else is just as normal. So, oh, weather report time, I guess. Um, the weather here in South Oxfordshire is beginning to get reasonably spring-like, which is lovely. Um, whether it'll last or not, I don't know. So this is where I jumped at the bottom. Now, OK, snips. We get rid of this piece, so cut that at a wedge and just cut that straight up. And I tend to take the score line with me. Now, these we are going to cut straight up, but I always, because it's just the way I do it, I always wedge out the score line. For me, it just makes a slightly neater finish um, to not have that score line. It's not vital. You could just cut straight up, but this is where I get a bit pernickety. And I like to just wedge out the score line. I'm not going to wedge at the at the left and right hand end. It's just cutting away the score line. And I don't even know if you can see that I'm doing that. So let me see if I can bring this up a bit. And I'm just cutting away that score line. Just a tiny weeny little bit. And it is teeny weeny trimmy little bit. Right, okay, so that's basically all the cutting we have to do. Um, possibly just trim that away. Again, not a vital, just a little wedge there. Uh, I'm going to put my tear and tape on now. I'm actually going to use um, 
Tombow, brain dead there, Tombow for most of the sticking, but for the big seam, this is the easiest um, adhesive to use. Press that down. But before I put it all together, I am going to put the paper on because I think it's easier to put the paper on something that is flat. So I used the floral on the original. I'm going to use the toadstools this time because I've got them. So I'm going to use them. Uh, I think they're really pretty. I've cut my... Oh, covered in fluff. Um, I have cut my paper. So I've got four pieces that are uh, six and three eighths by two inches. Again, it's a slightly annoying measurement because six and three eighths of an inch means you can't get two um, of these out of one sheet of designer series paper. Uh, but you are left with a good amount left. Now I'm just putting down all the snail at once because it's kind of quicker. Take your time doing this. I'm doing it quickly for the video. But you do want your snail to be as near straight. Um, and you're going to end up with a very small uh, margin. So you can get quite close to the crease line. So if I pop that down, um, you can probably see that is, that's your depth. It's a sixteenth of an inch. Um, so it's an eighth of an inch between each of the two panels, because obviously you're sticking them down when it's flat. So that is an eighth of an inch, that's a sixteenth. Now I haven't yet tried to do this in metric. Um, I will see whether I can. Uh, I'm not going to promise anything, but you never know. Right, last two pieces. Now we're we doing on the time. 12 minutes, I would caught up a bit. That's all right then. So one. Had I not been faffing around at the beginning, this would not have taken so long. Um, so I am... What am, what, am I going, what am I trying to say? I have no idea what I'm trying to say. Um, other than, oh yes, I know. So the coordination, the celebration coordination um, starts from the 1st of March and lasts just until the end of celebration. So it's one of those if you want them. Do you need to get them? They are not celebration items. They are items that go with um, other celebration items. Um, I'm just going to peel that off. So there are dyes that go with the Painted Season, for example. Um, there are dyes that go with some of the other stamps. I'm just folding the two flaps in because this is a symmetrical box. That will meet as if by magic. So I'm going to ignore the top for the moment and concentrate on the bottom. This is my back because that's where the seam is. So this is going to be the one of the first things I stick down. This will be my front. First things I'm going to do is pop in the sides. And as I say, I'm going to use Tombow because it's a nice adhesive to stick something down that's heavy. Because this is made for a bottle, um, you are going to need quite a reasonable amount of adhesive just to make sure it all sticks. Right, so back. The back goes in next. And this is the one that I jumped. So it's all being hidden nicely. Do try and make sure that you get your sides, your edge pieces, with a reasonable amount of adhesive, because that will stop it gaping at the bottom, and then, or at the sides, I should say. And then the last piece. And pop that in. And I'm just going to grab my bottle and use my bottle to make sure that that is stuck. Oops, sorry, bash the... So this is where, if you keep putting your bottle in to keep it, you push your sides in and, as if by magic, it all fits. So I'm actually going to take my bottle out, purely because for photography, having my bottle is not going to be helpful. So quarter inch circle punch, half 
eighth of an inch circle punch. This is while stocks last. It is not going to be in the annual catalogue. Um, you heard it here, probably not first, but you heard it here. Right, so where's my front? This is my front. So, whoops. Um, yeah, we've been told that the manufacturers will no longer be making it, so buy I punch and then punch the other side by eye in about the same place from the side and then you just squish your front and back together and you can get your the stumpy bit the bit that actually does the punching into that hole and then punch through um, these punches they're great they are not a crocodile uh, so don't expect them to go through five layers of cardstock um, because they won't. Right, ribbon. I'm using the petal, the poppy parade striped ribbon for this. Just trying to make sure I got my front sorted out. Uh, where's my front? Where's my front? There's my front. Right. So I'm going to cut a reasonable length of ribbon from there and then if you hold it from the back and grab your take your pick tool you can push it through all the layers at once so you want to do that on both ends and you just use the um, the embossing tool and then get any twist out of it and then just pull the two ends and tie in a nice bow. Now for the previous version which I'll grab in a minute um, I used the ribbon from the tea time uh, set what's it called it's a duo and it's it's the tea time something from the annual catalogue. I will list it on my website, um, the link for which is immediately in the description bar. I say immediately, it's about third or fourth line down. So that is that, and this was the ribbon that I used for the previous one. Let's just tie that up again. So we now just need to do the stamping. Now, for obviously for this one, I used the, um, the floral image. For this one, I'm not, because we haven't got the flower on it. There isn't a toadstool, but there is a nice fron. Um, and I'm picking out Mango Melody. And I'm just going to grab my dimensions, actually, because that would do nicely for stamping off the edge. So I'm just going to ink up my Mango Melody fronds. And just... Do some, I've just recently re-inked re this and I didn't do a very good job, I need to do it properly. Uh, so it's coming out a bit mottled, but actually quite nice as a result. Um, I'll have one there. I'm just building up a bit of a pattern, uh, which is then all going to get punched out. Um, I've got the Call Me Clover and I'm using the same leaf that I did for the previous version. And I'm just going to come in and just fill in a bit. Uh, might come there, I think. Um, obviously, you could use a smaller piece of card, um, but hey. And then Poppy Parade for the because adulting is hard. So just stamp that to one side and grab my two inch circle punch and I just want that so that it's sort of just there um, I'm not too fussed exactly where there is other than I want as much of the stamped background as possible then a piece of poppy parade and my starburst punch and we're pretty close to being finished so some dimensionals. Don't need that anymore. Couple of couple or three dimensionals on the back of this. I'll just take those. Oops. Take those off. 
And where are we time-wise? Oh, I've caught up! 19 minutes, which for me, for a box, is not bad. Um, this just pops on here. And then just a couple. Top and bottom. You can put more on, but equally you don't need to. And then this can pop on the front of my box. So we've got our two boxes and they both take a bottle of wine. So I hope you found that suitably amusing um, as in you know it was one of my train wreck videos again. Uh, however my version of a wine bottle box um, using the bundle for the Painted Seasons which is available now as a level two celebration item. So if you place that qualifying order, then this is free or the, the bundle is free. Remember that if you, when you place an order with me, if you use the, stat, the host code, you get to share in the stamping rewards and you also get to earn sunflower rewards. And when you've got 10 sunflower rewards, you can trade them in for product. Yay, free product from me. Um, if you enjoyed the video, my brain is just not working. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. I shouldn't be recording today. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you'd like to see more complete madness, please subscribe to my video, my YouTube channel. Um, I'm hoping to get to 6,000 subscribers by the end of celebration. I just need about another 50 at the point where I'm recording this. So if you don't already subscribe, please do. Um, you don't get emails filling up your email box unless you also ask to be notified but if you just subscribe you don't get the email stuff it just means that when you go to youtube it will tell you that i have put a video up if you would like my newsletter you can subscribe to that by hopping over to my website and the link for this post is in the description bar below and then you can fill in the uh, request form to go on my newsletter um, and if you want to see when I post, you can also subscribe to my blog post over on my website. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I look forward to seeing your orders for this um, soon. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly as well. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye!